What's up, guys? This is Manoj Puptani. I welcome you all on behalf of the Edupedia world. Let's head start. Fast enough, your seatbelts. We are about to take off with the first topic of the day, and that will be the first thing is first regarding definitions. So, before marking any of the beginning and uh, discussing any of the topic relating to this particular chapter, let's understand what we'll be able to come across. What kind of definitions we'll come across while studying this particular chapter. So, like any other act, in this particular act itself, the definitions have been mentioned in Section Two of the Insurance Act, 1938. So, the first definition is about authority. Okay. So, guys, what does authority mean as far as uh, this the Insurance Act, 1938, is concerned? This authority definition has been provided under Section Two, Subsection One A. Authority means the insurance regulatory and development authority. So, uh, if I'll talk about insurance, so just like if I'll talk about money markets, so there is one father over that, so that's RBI. If I'll talk about the securities market, so there is another father on that, so that's SEBI, the Securities Exchange Board of India. And if in case I'll talk about insurance, then in case of insurance, the father is the IRDA. In the insurance regulatory and development authority you have come across like various instances uh, wherein you can see uh, in the metro itself okay in many uh, many of the times we see in metro itself that there have been like advertisements which are placed on the billboards over there and it's being mentioned that uh, by the insurance regulatory development authority itself that is irda that irda doesn't make any of the calls to the policy holders telling them about the policy or some of the charges so I, irda doesn't do it at all and they usually tell you that in any case don't attend or entertain such calls wherein people are selling you insurance on the name of IRDA so that's strictly prohibited and IRDA doesn't indulge itself in any of that act so those uh, advertisements kindly remember those up okay because I am telling you this as an example so this particular stuff which is being available on the billboards of metro various metros by IRDA. So IRDA is the authority which is basically taking care of the insurance practices in India. If I'll talk about authority with respect to any of the the Insurance Act 1938, so that will be IRDA authority. That is Insurance Regulatory Development Authority, okay, which is established under Section 3, Subsection 1 of the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority Act 1999. This particular act, that is IRDA Act, I'll be covering this in my next chapter so there you'll get to know about this IRDA Act 2 but let's mark the beginning first of all with the Insurance Act 1938 first of all so since it came first in the picture so we'll study that so this is about the authority moving on to the next part that is the policy holder the definition of policy holder has been like explained under section 2 subsection 2 policy holder basically will include a person to whom the whole of the interest of the policy holder in the policy is assigned once and for all but that does not include an assignee thereof whose interest in the policy is defeasible so this is the bare act definition okay if i need to like make you understand the topic of policy holder i can simply say that you your father your parents usually like complete they take a policies okay on your behalf on uh, their own self okay dad is taking up uh, the policy for itself himself and uh, he is also taking care of the spouse that means your mother so in any case uh, they are taking the policy for that whole okay company uh, complete uh, family for that matter so that will include by means and includes I like referred this term again so means means this is it and that's it includes means this is the exhaustive list this is not the exhaustive list so you can add up to as many things as you want so includes is a broader term means is a very narrow term so since it's been like mentioned over here that the policy holder includes so this is something which is included in it but that's the term which is just not exhaustive so you can add as many things as you want in that so it's about a person to whom the whole of the interest of the policy you purchased up a policy for yourself okay so the policy and the kind of money that you'll be receiving once the policy is going to get matured okay the interest of that lies with you perfect since the interest with you lies uh, completely with you in that particular sense so you are the policy holder of that policy okay 
but if in case there is some kind of condition with respect to that particular policy that it can contain some of the valid objection it can go for any of the option of for for feature and there could be any kind of cases of annulment so in that particular case that is not going to get included in the term of policy holder because there is a chance wherein you will not be able to get the benefit out of it why because the same is going to get forfeited or annulled or uh, maybe uh, just not feasible so it doesn't include an assignee thereof whose interest in the policy is defeasible so that is the example which i provided to you in order to make you understand about the policy holder term so but you need to understand one thing whenever you quote any of the definition in your examination that's a point for examination which i am telling you right away so whenever uh, you wish to write any of the definition along with section so you need to ensure that you write that definition in the whole and complete sense which has been provided in the bare act number 1 if you are quoting section along with it if in case you are not quoting any of the section along with it then you can frame up that particular definition in your own term at the most that's feasible for you to understand okay i am still writing something on the same lines as to what bare act has explained so that's perfectly okay but if in case you are writing a section along with the definition do 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 ensure that you are writing the exact wording for that matter because that's something which is that should be exactly the same because you are quoting the section so you need to understand what has been mentioned in the section the same thing you need to write in your paper so that is something which i wanted to tell you up the policy holder when includes a person to whom the whole of the interest the complete interest of that policy is uh, attributable to that particular policy holder in that policy is assigned and for all but does not include any assignee thereof whose interest in the policy is defeasible by defeasible it simply mean that can be forfeited that can uh, attract any of the valid objection that can be annulled in any case so you need to understand that so that's about the definitions of authority and policy holder i i'm sure that you guys got the complete clarity with respect to both the things perfect let's move to the next definition so the next definition is about the approved securities and the fire insurance business let's cover approved securities first of all this has been mentioned under section 2 subsection 3 so what does approved securities actually mean approved securities actually simply means the government securities or other securities which are guaranteed completely fully as regard their principal and their interest by the central government or the government of any state that means state government next it will include uh, it means basically so uh, the debentures or other securities of money which are issued under the authority of any central act or act of state legislature now the third one approved securities means the shares of a corporation established by law and guaranteed completely like fully by the central government or the government of a state as to the repayment of the principal so by reading this particular definition i can simply tell you that approved securities is a kind of security wherein you are like completely confident that you will be able to extract the best kind of investment in it as far as the safety and security of that principal and interest is involved so you are like carefree so if you will be like purchasing these securities you you are carefree okay that i'll be uh, i'll be able to receive my principal and i'll be able to receive my interest because that is being like completely backed up by central government or state government so approved securities are the ones which are being provided and issued by government itself so approved securities will mean all those kind of government securities or other securities which are guaranteed completely as regard to their principal their interest by central government or state government and they'll also include some of the debentures and other securities for monies which are issued under the authority of central act or state legislature act and this will also in mean the shares of all the corporation which is established by law itself and guaranteed fully again you are getting some of the backing from the central government or the government of the state as to the repayment of that principal so this is something relating to approved securities so a kind of securities which is which are actually backed up by the central government state government or the corporation which are established by law or central government itself so the kind of securities these companies these uh these uh different persons are issuing maybe central government state government or any corporation so if 
the same uh, securities are being issued by them any three of them so these will be called the approved securities i hope you guys got the complete clarity with respect to what does approved securities actually mean now moving on to the fire insurance business this has been explained under section 2 subsection 6a so what does fire insurance basically mean fire insurance business means a business of effective contracts of insurance against loss by or incidental to fire or other occurrence which are customarily included among the risk insured against in fire insurance policy so uh, you have a business okay you got a business let's say a factory but you are aware of the fact that uh, any of the time fire can broke out in that factory because there are uh, there is an involvement of huge amount of machinery over there and uh, the kind of uh, waste which is being generated from those machinery that's toxic so the first thing that that will come to your mind while you'll be establishing or setting up that particular factory will be the fire insurance why because that is something which can happen any of the time so you'll be availing the benefit of having the fire insurance policy so in that particular case if there is a company which is providing uh, some kind of contracts between you and that insurance company okay in terms of their business of providing you the security and safety against any of the fire which usually broke out can broke out in your organization or your factory so what are we dealing in that particular case we are dealing into a fire insurance business i am providing you a security and in consideration of that you are providing me the premium on what we have simple fire insurance so fire insurance business means the business of effecting the contract of insurance against loss by or incidental to fire or any other occurrence which is customarily being included among all those risks insured against the fire insurance policy itself so that is something related to fire insurance business the same thing has been like mentioned under section 2 sub section 6a are you guys perfect with that cool let's move to the next definition now moving on to general insurance business and insurance agent so if i'll talk about general insurance business the same thing is being covered under section 2 sub section 6b general insurance business means fire marine or miscellaneous insurance business whether carried on singly or in combination with one or more of them so general insurance business if i'll talk about that is a broad one its category is broad many of the things are uh, get usually get included in general insurance business but if i'll talk about fire that is something which will relate to only fire that is particularly on that a segment itself wherein i'll be dealing into any of the contract of business affecting uh, with the help of uh, with uh, on on the basis of fire over there so general insurance is a broader term that includes fire itself so fire marine or any of the miscellaneous insurance business that you can think about whether carried on a singly basis or in combination with one or more of them that will all be con- uh, covered under this general insurance business so usually uh, people do take up general insurance itself because that's going to cover up any kind of fire itself so fire burglary marine embezzlement any of the uh, like theft so all these things will be like covered in general insurance business itself so usually pick up pay, uh, usually take up this particular uh, insurance itself wherein they don't resort to getting uh, the fire insurance business into the picture and if in case only uh, when there is a huge amount of possibility wherein uh, the amount of loss which can happen due to fire is extremely huge and people don't want to take any of the risk usually then they can go for having a fire insurance business because they know that the amount they'll be receiving from general insurance business as the claim amount will be like far far less uh, in that particular case so if you are they are particularly sure about uh, that the company is prone the factory is prone to only fire then they can go for fire insurance business otherwise if your dad is also having any of the factory businesses definitely do uh, suggest and guide them up in having a general insurance business because it's going to cover each and every stuff over there so be it fire be it marine be it uh, embezzlement be it burglary be it theft all these things will be like covered in this particular segment itself so that is something related to general insurance business the same thing has been like mentioned under section 2 sub section 6b now moving into uh, the insurance agent so who is a person who is entitled to be called as an insurance agent this thing has been like explained under section 2 sub section 10 so who is a fire uh, who is a insurance agent the insurance agent means an insurance agent 
licensed under section 42 who receives or agrees to receive payment by way of commission or any other remuneration in consideration of his soliciting or procuring the insurance business including the business relating to the continuation, renewal and revival of the policies of insurance. So guys, let's understand this particular term with an example because that's going to help you up in understanding the facts in a more clear way. So, uh, you must have seen many of the people around you. Uh, in fact, many of the chartered accountants are also doing this business side by side. Okay, simultaneously along with their uh, different works. Many of the CEAs are also like, uh, have become uh, insurance advisors. Wherein uh, usually at the last moment of time when people are like uh, running here and there on the uh, on filing of their uh, income tax returns so they usually they provide this kind of stuff that uh, you can avail the benefit under section 80c deduction so if you want to take up any of the life insurance policy you can take up so who is basically an insurance agent so he or she is the person okay who has been licensed first of all under section 42 uh, IRDA and the LIC and these kind of organizations usually uh, make you uh, sign a form first of all okay and they give you a license uh, in that particular case that you'll be treated as an insurance agent from now on okay so what is that particular stuff that what kind of formality are they doing so that's this particular stuff that they get you the license under section 42 first of all in order to make you uh, an insurance agent on the first behalf next what will be your role in that you will promote the business you'll promote the insurance business you'll get the policies covered of many other people okay and now since that person who will be like getting covered under that policy is going to pay, pay you some of the premium on that summer shot obviously they will so out of that premium you will be paying the complete premium to the company insurance company and in return of that in consideration the company is going to provide you some amount of commission you are doing all these stuff why because you need to have that commission in your hand so it means an agent who has been licensed under section 42 and who receives either you are receiving or you are agreeing to receive the payment that might happen that uh, you haven't received the payment till now okay and that's your first uh, policy which you have just sold but you got licensed in that and you will be able to receive that payment and you agree to receive that payment. so whether you will be like called an insurance agent before receiving that payment obviously you will call you will be called why because uh, it's it's about who receives or either agrees to receive the payment so you've agreed that you'll be receiving that payment by way of commission or any other remuneration in consideration of what what are you doing in front of that so you are promoting that business of insurance company by selling their insurance policy so in consideration of your soliciting or procuring the insurance business you are procuring the insurance business on their behalf so you'll be promoting that and you'll be selling out those insurance policy and including any of the business which is relating to the continuation now what does this mean let's suppose in the first year uh, you got a person on board okay you sold a policy to them you got the premium uh, from them you uh, basically dispatched that premium to the company insurance company and in, in consideration that paid you the year first year commission now the next year again the same person is going to continue the policy and he'll be like paying the premium again in the next year now this amount will straight away go to the insurance company's account obviously now this doesn't mean that you will not be getting the commission for next year obviously you'll be getting though that will be uh, a bit less as compared to the first year because uh, now you have provided them the direct referrals so you'll be still you'll still be getting the commission maybe a, a bit less so now this thing comes into the picture including the business relating to continuation renewal or revival of the policies of insurance so now that I have provided you the ample amount of examples now read it again and you'll get to know about what does an insurance agent mean uh, insurance agent means an insurance agent who has been licensed under section 42 number one who receives or agrees to receive the payment by way of commission or other remuneration number two in consideration of his soliciting or procuring the insurance business number three and including the business related to the continuation renewal or revival of the policies of insurance number five are you guys all clear with each and every kind of line that i explained to you with this i'll say thank you on behalf of the edupedia world keep interacting by our questions queries and youtube comment boxes i will love to solve each one of your query and grievances
if in case you have for me do you appreciate the kind of work which we are doing do shine do keep loving perfect god bless you up see you in a lot more exciting topics still pending to be done